Hello, this is Father Dario Shivansky. Uh, this, you may remember me from such episodes of this Lenten retreat as the first part dedicated to Nicodemus and the second part dedicated to Job, the main protagonist of the book of Job. Today, I want to talk to you about the Samaritan woman whom Jesus meets at the well. Well, that story is uh, told in the book of, in the Gospel of John. John is um, very interested in very sim symbolic actions that Jesus undertook. And this, the meeting with the Samaritan woman is just filled. It, it is just, just uh, loaded with uh, symbolic actions and symbolism that uh, the reader must be aware of before getting to understand whatever it is written there. So there you have, you have Jesus walking down to uh, uh, Jerusalem and you have that Samaritan woman whom, she, whom he meets at the well. Well, the Samaritans and the Jews were not really friendly towards one another. Well, these two nations were actually hostile to, towards one another, and the story, the history of that hatred goes way back to the 7th, 8th uh, century, actually. Well, it's not maybe the point to tell the whole story, but you may know that by the end of the 6th century before Christ, most definitely in the 5th century before Christ, well, the Samaritans, they were viewed upon by the Jews as a separate nation. Even though they lived in the Promised Land, actually they lived between, they lived between Galilee, which is up in the north of Palestine, and uh, Judea, which is down in the south. So in the middle, there is the Samaritan land, where the Samaritans, uh, which the, the Samaritans inhabited, well, the Samaritans did not really uh, go along with, uh, with the Jews due to some historical circumstances, as I mentioned. But Jesus, surprisingly to us, to the readers of uh, Gospels, um, is sort of, I don't want to say favorizing the Samaritans, but he tells us, he presents them as the good guys. You may remember the story about the merciful Samaritan uh, where a Samaritan is pictured as the good guy. That story is told to the Jews, to the compatriots of Jesus, and they could have been, I would say, offended by it. Imagine you have a member of a hostile nation, I mean, from our perspective, and you hear a story uh, told you and that story incorporates that uh, member of, the, of a hostile nation uh, being pictured as the good guy and the rest of the protagonists uh, who happen to be members of your nation, happen to be Polish people, and they are the bad guys. Well, something is awkward in here, but Jesus is using techniques like that simply to provoke his, his uh, audience to think. Well, that meeting with the Samaritan woman is very strange from the point of view of uh, the people of the time. First of all, uh, the Jews would never meet in the open with women, women and children, uh, especially if you were a, a respected, venerated teacher. You would not really want uh, people seeing you, uh, when you when you meet with kids. Remember that story when uh, the apostles were preventing kids from coming to Jesus, and Jesus says, let them come to me. Well, kids in those times, in those realities, they were like things. They were nothing. They were nothing. Um, the same goes to women. I'm not saying they were nothing. They were simply not having the rights they have right now. Well, they were if they wanted to say something in public, it would be through their husbands. Their husbands were like their tubes. They could speak for their wives if they 
felt like that. At any rate, Jesus meets not only with a woman, but he meets with a woman who belongs to an enemy nation. Well, the story, I mean, the very meeting is very, is, is very awkward. The woman comes to the well to draw, to get out of the well some water, and she is doing it at noon. That is, I mean, to us, it is like, well, that detail doesn't really matter. Well, it matters to the readers of the gospel at the time. Because you know what? Of course, it was the task of women, one of the tasks of women, to bring water to their home households. So every day, women would go to the local well and get water and bring water to their households. It was their task. But they would do it in the morning or in the evening when the heat was not on. Well, that, that was the most preferable time in the morning or in the evening. That Samaritan woman is coming to the well all by herself at noon, meaning, well, she has a problem. She has a problem that, she, that, is, that she's carrying in her, in her heart. She doesn't want to meet with anybody, not with her fellow um, neighbors, women she knows uh, and with whom she might talk about interesting things. No, she wants to be alone by herself. She, that woman, as we realize in the course of reading, she's a mess, and she knows that. Jesus sees her tr through, like, like he did with Nicodemus, and he says, uh, actually, he says things that are, again, very strange about water. He wants her to give him a drink, I mean, give him water. And she says, she is just shocked by the very request. She says, well, you are a Jew, and you want me, a Samaritan woman, to give you water? That is so awkward. I mean, no, no Jew would ever do that. First of all, no Jew would ask a Samaritan to give him something to eat or to drink. And no, no Jew would ask a woman, a Samaritan woman, to do that for him. Jesus is not offended, is not put off by her statement. He knows that that woman, as I said, she's a mess. She's carrying in her heart a horrible suffering due to probably horrible mistakes that she committed in her life. Well, what kind of mistakes? Well, in the course of reading, it results that she had five husbands. Now she's living, cohabitating with the sixth one. And she gets that info from Jesus. Wait a second, how did he know that? He must be a prophet. And Jesus tells her, you know what? You have a problem, and I know more than anybody else how much you suffer. And I want to offer you a fresh start, a reset. But before we get there, what could, be, uh, uh, what could that problem be um, about that Samaritan woman? Well, Jesus said, you had five husbands, and now you have the sixth one who is not your husband. You just cohabitate with him. Meaning all your matrimonies or your marriages were kind of strange and unsuccessful. Why would that be so? Well, in, uh, there are two possible solutions, uh, two possible uh, answers to this question. Either she was um, a widow who would be married to you know, successive um, members of the same family or to other men, one after another, who would be just dying and after their death, uh, she would be married to somebody else. But it is rather improb uh, 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 improbable. Uh, she was probably um, having a history of 
something else. She was a divorced woman who was um, getting married to five different men, one after another. In Judaism, amongst the Samaritans, it was uh, permitted to divorce your wife under certain circumstances. What were their circumstances? Well, if she was barren, meaning she couldn't have children, you could divorce her because the, 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 most, the first commandment that God ever gave to humanity was to be, um, to multiply, right? To, to um, beget children. If a husband couldn't have children with his wife, uh, the rabbis would have him wait seven years. If after seven years he couldn't have children with her, he was supposed to divorce her because he couldn't uh, meet that requirement, that commandment, fulfill that commandment that every uh, Jewish male had to, meaning he, he couldn't beget a child. So due to that, he could have divorced her and uh, it was lawful and appropriate. But is this the case of our Samaritan woman? Probably not. Uh, most probably, and that is from antiquity on, that the, the authors have been uh, claiming. Well, she must have made uh, a lot of wrong choices. If she was barren, Nobody would then accept her for his wife. If she got divorced due to the reason that she was barren, nobody would take her for his lawful wife again. So she had probably a history of infidelity. She was a woman who was following her instincts, sexual instincts most probably, as the most even ancient authors say, and due to those, she was a mess. She made a lot of different wrong choices. And due to those, she suffered and people around her suffered immensely. That's why she didn't want to um, get together with other women from her village. She preferred to stay alone because her reputation probably was preceding her. And so people were considering her, you know, once again, a mess. Well, that woman happens to meet Jesus. And Jesus says, you know what? I'm offering you a fresh start. I don't care how many mistakes you made. I don't care how many badly cho bad choices you made. I'm saying, you deserve a fresh start. And he offers it to her. Well, that woman it's just, I mean, it's just, it just blows her mind, you know. You could knock her out with, with a feather. She just, I mean, her joy is so immense that she lifts her jar, the one with which she came over to the well. She lifts her jar at the well and runs toward the village to tell everyone what he did for her. That very jar is also very symbolic. It symbolizes her previous life. With all those wrong choices, mistakes, those sins she committed, people whom she, well, whom she injured with her choices. Jesus says, I'm taking it from you. Leave it here. You go ahead and you talk to everyone uh, about the grace, uh, the healing that you experienced from God. And the reason I'm telling you this story is that your faith may also undergo a certain crisis because of the choices that you've made. Well, we may end up in mess um, because we as people are inclined to commit sins, to be caught up with different things, things that finally bring destruction to us, to our relatives, to people around us. 
we may be guilty of all sorts of wrong choices. And when you look back and you see the disaster that you left behind, you may think, there is no mercy for me. I mean, there is no way people will forgive me. And there is, there is no way God will forgive me and do something about my messy life. Well, I'm saying, look at the gospel. Look at the Samaritan woman. She is an example of the fact that Jesus can really make sense of your life. Well, just leave it at his feet, like the jar that the woman left. Let yourself be healed by what he has to offer. Don't let your sins, your wrong choices, uh, run the show. Don't let those things control your life. You deserve a fresh start. Sometimes people lose their faith because of the amount of stupidity that they committed in their lives. And they feel like, you know, there's no way God can forgive them. There's no way people can show mercy to them for what they have done. That's why, out of God knows what, they drift away from God. Instead of you know, getting closer, they drift away from Him because they feel like God will only have punishment for them. Well, the story about the Samaritan woman says, well, God doesn't mind. He's greater than your sins. He's greater than an ocean of sins. He is offering you a fresh start, a new beginning, something that you can start with and become a totally different person with His grace. Take it, and you'll see a miracle happen in your life. Amen.